This video is to help you with number two on CR Helper number 28. Number two says a marathon runner can run 24 miles in four hours, 45 minutes. What is the runner's average speed in miles per hour? That means how many miles can that runner go in just one hour? Miles per hour, if you see a sign on the highway that says 65 miles per hour, it means you'll go 65 miles every hour you travel. That's what speed means. It tells you how far you get to go in just one hour. So for this runner, they're traveling 24 miles in four hours, 45 minutes. Hmm. The issue is we need miles per hour. We have four hours, 45 minutes. You can't have different units so we need to convert our minutes into hours so let's just quick do that so if we have 45 minutes what part of an hour is that a couple ways you can look at it you could draw a clock oh that's an ugly circle but that's all right and a clock is a total of 60 minutes in an hour i'm going to break that 60 minutes into fourths or quarters again kind of ugly but what are you going to do so if you look here and we get up to 15 minutes, you know after 15 minutes have passed, that's one quarter or one fourth of an hour. Once you get up to 30 minutes, that would be a half of an hour. Now we're going to continue on 15 more minutes. We're up to 45 minutes. 45 minutes is one, two, three fourths of an hour. And then finally, you'd go your last 15 minutes, get all the way up to 60. Okay, so 45 minutes is three fourths of an hour. If you're not comfortable with that visual and you're like, I don't think I could get that 45 minutes was three fourths of an hour on my own, you could always do your part out of total. To figure this one out you could say 45 minutes is what part of an hour well what's the total number of minutes in an hour 60 minutes in an hour then you just simplify that you could divide numerator and denominator some of you might start with five you can actually divide numerator and denominator by 15 and guess what 45 divided by 15 15 goes into 45 three times, 60 divided by 15, 15 goes into 64 times. So either way, you're going to get 45 out of 60 minutes to be three quarters of that hour. All right, so that whole process was to get us to the point that we know that runner travels 24 miles in four and three fourths of an hour. In sixth grade, you probably do the upside down carrot. So I'm going to do that, but I also want to show you in seventh grade how you'll look at it. Because I don't want you to think it's a brand new topic in seventh grade. You study the same items, but in seventh grade, you talk about them in terms of equivalent ratios. So let's do your upside down carrot first. Let's do miles to hours. Ooh. Miles to hours. And so then you always take a look at your known information. You know it's 24 miles in four and three-fourths hours. So that's 24 miles in four and three-fourths hours equals, they're looking for how many miles per hour. We don't know how many miles, but we know when they say miles per hour, we just care about one hour. So if you can go 24 miles in four and three quarters hours, how many miles can you go in just one hour? So you look at the part you are given information about and you say, gosh, how do I get from four and three quarters to one? Oh, four and three fourths divided by four and three fourths gets us to one. And that tells us, oh, all right, if I have to divide my hours by four and three fourths to get down to just one hour, oh, I gotta take my miles and divide it by four and three fourths. So let's go ahead and do that. 24 divided by four and three fourths. All right, again, 
we first have to remember our standard algorithm for division. When we're going to divide, we need to rewrite this. There's many ways to go about it, but the standard way is we need to rewrite this as an improper fraction. That would be our first step. So I always like visuals. So if I'm doing four and three quarters, I know I have four whole circles and then three-fourths of another circle. And there's an ugly three-fourths, but another three-fourths of another, of another circle. So we have four whole circles and three-fourths of another. And the question is, how many fourths does that really mean? So if I break these circles into fourths, my only thing is if I have four whole circles and three-fourths of another, how many fourths do I have? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, I have 19 fourths sitting there. So this is really 24 divided by 19 fourths. Also, let me just make sure you remember the teachers aren't always going to be drawing out circles every time. So they give you a quick little method to do it. Four times four, because in four holes, there's four fourths in each of those four holes. So they do four times four. They say, okay, in four whole circles, there's 16 fourths. So that's four times four is 16. And then they take those 16 fourths and add on three more fourths. And so that's how they get you to 19 fourths. I just want to remind you that's what your teachers have you do. Multiply and then add on. And visually, this is why they have you do that. So then there's lots of ways to divide fractions, but the standard algorithm, you usually do drop, change, flip, skip, flip, multiply. So you keep that first fraction, which is the same as 24 over 1. You change your division to multiplication. We undo division with multiplication. And then we have to multiply by the inverse. So we have to do 4 nineteenths. All right, and then we're going to multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So 24 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Put down a 6, carry a 1. 4 times 2 is 8, and 1 is 9, 96. So then we have 96 over 19, 96, 19. So when we multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and so then at that point, we need to go ahead and do division. 96 divided by 19, bottom out. 19 goes into 96. Oh, 19 is about 20. 96 is about 100. 20 goes into 100 five times. I'm going to try five. I'm, I'm not going to guarantee you that's going to work. I'm estimating. I'm saying, okay, this is about 20. This is about 100. 20 goes into 100 five times. Let's try five. So I'm going to put that five right above the six there. Five times 19. Oh, goodness. 19 times five. 9 times 5 is 45, put down a 5, carry a 4. 5 times 1 is 5, and 4 more is 9. Oh, good, did that work out? 5 times 9 is 45, put down a 5, carry a 4. 5 times 1 is 5, ooh, yay, oh, good. I really, I wasn't positive what 19 times 5 was. So then 19 times 5 is 95, I subtract off. 96 minus 95 is 1. So that means we have 5 and 1 19th left over, 5 and 1 19th. So this runner can go 5 and 1 19th miles per hour. I mean, it's not a nice, but it's, well, it is a lovely answer, but I mean, it's not pretty, but who cares? So this is 5 and 1 19th miles per hour. So that runner can run just a little bit more than five miles each hour. Hopefully that helps.